Okay guys, welcome back again to the channel. So, uh, since I've been p uh, playing uh, Euro Truck Simulator 2 uh, lately, or let's say replaying this game, uh, I thought I should, uh, should share something with you regarding the performance of the game. Because, fortunately for me, I have an RDX 2070 Super and I can play this game uh, with all the settings uh, maxed uh, out and I don't care too much uh, uh, to lower something but since uh, most of the people uh, use like uh, mid-range GPUs and uh, CPUs or let's say PCs uh, maybe uh, some lower uh, and um, uh, lower end stuff uh, uh, there are definitely something you can do to uh, to get better FPS from the game without sacrificing too much the visual quality. So basically, that's why I decided to make this video because uh, uh, there is a nothing uh, another thing about this game because this is a fairly old game right now. So definitely, it's not very much optimized for the new drivers and new stuff. Uh, so it can suffer from time to time uh, in various areas. Believe it or not, uh, there are some cities, some uh, uh, particular areas where uh, even if you have a 2080 Ti, you won't be able to get more than 40 or 50 FPS. Uh, it depends obviously on the version of the game you have, uh, how many uh, mods you have installed and so on. So basically there are too many variables. But uh, if you have the vanilla game, uh, you should be fine with the most uh, things, let's say. And the first thing uh, I want you to do and you uh, need to do uh, to get better performance uh, out, of the game, uh, out of the game is changing the DirectX um, uh, from uh, version 9 to version 11. And to do that it's really simple. You, you just go after you have installed the game obviously. You go uh, into uh, documents on your PC and then you find the Euro Truck Simulator 2 folder and in there you will, you will have a text file named config. You open that file with notepad or with wordpad, depends whatever you may have installed on your PC. And on the list there you, uh, you need to find the R underscore device uh, where it says R underscore device it equals it will be uh, it will be DirectX 9, you just change uh, DX9 to DX11, uh, you, so basically you just change, you just change uh, from 9 to 11, uh, you click on save, you close that file and you are uh, good to go. And whatever settings you may have on your game, uh, you will gain at least from 5 to maybe uh, over 30 FPS depending on the area and de uh, on the area which uh, which you are on and depending on your PC. So basically this is the first thing and the easiest way to get a boost uh, in performance into the game. And then we're going to go uh, to the settings uh, that you can change uh, uh, inside the game to get better performance. So I'm into the CD right now so uh, because I told you that <coughs> And usually uh, in the city the uh, frame rates drops uh, very much uh, I have installed various uh, modes reshades uh, and textures and so on to uh, to put a load on my GPU I hope you can see the information uh, on the uh, of the MSI but sometimes that information disappears when I record a video I don't know but anyway I have added an FPS counter on the right hand corner of the video so if you don't see the MSI you can see uh, the other FPS and uh, the first thing uh, that hits the most the performance into the game believe it or not are the mirrors and the reason being is uh, because uh, the mirrors are going to be a different render let's say if uh, your main GP, uh, your gpu is rendering the main visual that you are seeing the current screen that you are seeing uh, when you enable the mirrors or when you look at the mirrors, the mirrors are going to be a different, a whole different rendering uh, for the GPU. It's like rendering another game for the GPU. Obviously, uh, obviously that is uh, on a uh, much lower scale, but anyway, it's like uh, the GPU has to render a different game uh, into, that, uh, uh, into that space. Uh, although it may be small, but the... Um, uh, the impact that it has on the performance is going to be huge. So let me show here we have uh, 
no mirrors uh, uh, going on and we are 85 FPS yeah 84 85 86 so let's call it uh, 85 so look what happens when we enable the mirrors only one it goes to 41 44 and then it goes back a little bit up and it stops to 55 so from 85 to 55 let's enable another mirror again it goes down and then it goes back up again and it stops to 48 but basically this number can change because it depends what it has to render into the mirrors and what it has to render obviously uh, on the main screen or let's say the main visual that you are looking for so let's disable again the mirrors and you will see the frame rate goes back up to 85 uh, the same thing uh, on the inside as you see uh, we have the mirrors on the left side and we are on 54 55 57 okay 54 and if we look away from the mirror you see that we go immediately over 80 fps and if we look at the mirror again we go again so basically with this change is almost like uh, 30 to 40 percent maybe even more i cannot do the calculation right now but you can do it yourself uh, if you like so yeah the mirrors are the most um, uh, the most uh, or let's say the highest uh, will have the highest impact on your fps now obviously we cannot uh, disable all the mirrors but what i do if you drive uh, uh, if you drive inside i just go like a middle uh, uh, of the mirrors and you gain a look you gain a little bit of fps and i disable obviously the virtual mirrors to look back you just have to turn turn around and you should be good to go what you can do obviously is go to settings and then go to options then graphics settings and in here you have obviously not simple we need to activate advanced mode and in here you have two things you need to change for the mirror the mirror quality uh, I suggest you keep it on low if you are under 60 FPS and mirror distance you can keep it on medium on low because you will not lose too much data out of it you will have the the necessary data to be able to play the game so you can uh, you can use this trick to gain uh, to give yourself a very nice boost in performance but before we go any further I have to mention something about FPS at least in my uh, at least in my opinion um, at least for this kind of game I consider uh, if you have like lower than 30 FPS on your game then I consider that to be bad gameplay or unplayable gameplay for me it's not playable I cannot play under 30 FPS if you get from 30 to 40 fps that can be considered bad gameplay but but still playable let's call it this way uh, and from 40 to 60 fps uh, that i consider to be good gameplay and above 60 fps that is going to be very good gameplay especially for these games obviously uh, let's say like driving but uh, because if you play, for example, uh, a shooter game, a very fast-paced game, then even 100 FPS uh, can be uh, can be not enough. You need 144 and up. For, but for this kind of game, again, under 30, bad gameplay, unplayable. 30 to 40, bad gameplay, but playable, still playable. 40 to 60, good gameplay, and above 60, very good gameplay. If you get over 100, like I do with mine, with mine, then you uh, you are uh, gold. You don't need any more FPS than uh, that. So you have to keep in mind. That's why I uh, I'm telling you these kind of tricks. You can play first with uh, going from DirectX 9 to DirectX 11. Uh, like i told you at the beginning of the video then play with the performance uh, of the mirrors by turning them down because obviously we cannot turn off the mirrors because we need the mirrors 
into this uh, simulation game and uh, only with these two tricks you are going to be able to gain at least at least 20 percent more fps which basically means that if you are under 30 fps you can go maybe to around 35 for 40 fps so you go from unplayable you go to playable gameplay or if you are to 35 uh, 40 fps you can go to 50 maybe a little bit more so you go to good gameplay so uh, in, in terms of fps maybe you uh, your gain is going to be small like uh, five or maybe a little bit less fps not like i'm doing in here like i get for example 20 or 30 fps change uh, but uh, those five fps can take you from a, a category to another category which uh, is very important so these are the first two tricks and i think the only one that you may profit the more of but if we want to dig a little bit um, a little bit further into <coughs> Uh, into the settings we can go again into the settings go to graphics obviously we have all on maximum and the next thing you you need to look out for to gain uh, to gain a nice boost in fps is scaling at um, uh, at default it uh, it is on 125 i have mine on 400 percent at 1080p resolution because my pc can handle 400 percent which basically i'm telling my pc or my gpu to render the game four times bigger than the 1080p which basically is 4k and then it downscales it down to my screen which is 1080p so basically it's rendering the game at 4k with 400 percent and it's scaling it down at um, uh, at uh, 1080p so if we go for example 100 percent only 1080p hit apply let's see what happens to the fps now hope it had it's still a recording because something strange happens when you change resolution or scaling but anyway let's see. oh i'm having so much of oh, some artifacts maybe because of the shaders i don't know but if we go to the same spot as we were before which was here okay 90 fps uh, 93 so basically a little bit more although the screen is all messed up so let's just take it back to where it was before apply and see if this fixes it hopefully okay come on okay since i'm recording also it struggles a little bit but yeah you get uh, the idea the next thing uh, besides the two things i mentioned to play with is the scaling obviously the higher the scaling the cleaner the image is going to be and so you are going to uh, to get the result that you want so you can play with this one from 100 percent i don't recommend you go lower than 100 percent uh, you begin with 125, 350, 200, 300, 400, and so on until you get to the point where you see um, the best image possible obviously with the target FPS that you have or that you can achieve with your PC. So this is the next thing to look about and after this you have another step which you can do and is the anti-aliasing MLAA which basically uh, has a really nice um, uh, a really nice uh, hit on the performance but it doesn't change too much the visual quality especially if you go uh, higher than 125 percent scaling you don't even need the mlaa and in this way with uh, the mlaa let's just try it see what happens to mine but since i'm on 400 percent i don't think it's going to change something big but anyway let's give it a try and see what happens without mlaa okay nice holy shoot what i didn't expect it to give uh, that much of performance i don't know if you can tell i can't tell too much of a difference uh, in the visual quality but uh, uh, the fps gain is almost 15 percent maybe even more from we went from 85 where now 95 98 93 89 85 84 it depends where the camera is let's activate the mirrors and see uh, before i think we were to 55 i think well with the mirrors it is a little bit worse but yeah it depends uh, also on the time where we are in and what we are looking for 
Oh, I don't really know if I'm looking at the right direction at the beginning, but you get the idea. You play also with the MLAA or anti-aliasing MLAA. So I'm going to activate mine because obviously my PC can handle it. And yeah, pretty much uh, these are the most important thing which you can use uh, which you can use to get a better performance out of your PC. So uh, yeah, obviously there are many other things which you can tweak and change in here to get better performance. But in general, out of these um, uh, things that I told you into this video, you are going to be able to get at least 20 to 40% more FPS without lowering anything else. And Again, it depends on the target of FPS which you want to stick with. For example, uh, my goal is to stick at least uh, over 60 FPS and with uh, all things activated I can stay with my GPU. But obviously if you have a lower G end GPU, uh, obviously you need to play a little bit more and lower a little bit more of settings or tone them down a bit to get better performance. But basically, you will uh, at the end of the day you are not going to lose too much in visual quality if you change the th uh, these things that I told you uh, because the other things um, on the settings are going to change the visual quality uh, more than these things uh, I told you so basically these are the most useful and efficient things to do when playing with the visual quality because uh, you will gain much more FPS with this uh, if you change these settings that I told you right now and obviously you will not lose or oh, let's say uh, or oh, let's say this way you will earn up to 40 percent more fps with these uh, changes and obviously you are going to uh, to lose like maybe at maximum five percent of your visual quality so uh, yeah that's the best way i can put it uh, about this uh, these settings uh, that i just showed you okay then guys so uh, that was uh, it for today hope uh, this was uh, helpful for you guys if uh, you enjoyed it please consider subscribing to the channel also turn on notifications so you never miss one of my new videos or maybe tutorials like this one so you can uh, profit from your gameplay and take advantage of your current pc that you are using and yeah don't forget to subscribe Hit the, uh, not, uh, hit the notification bell. Don't forget also to like and share the videos because it will help me very much. And yeah, as always, catch you guys on the next one. Bye-bye.